uh, you know, that's why I said, you know, trying to predict, you know, goaltending. So uh, according to uh, NHL.com, they came out with their with their list once again. What do you think? How, how, how did they fare? I think you, what is it? You, the centers is what you ripped apart of the right wing. I'm trying to remember which one. Centers is what I ripped apart. Right wing wasn't bad. They made a couple mistakes. Goaltender looks like this in the top 10. Let's start off at number 10 with John Gibson of the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, could be higher if he puts together healthy seasons. That's been a concern with John Gibson ever since he entered totally. the NHL. Playing a regular 65 to 70 games like a true starter, he could be a lot higher. Fred Anderson comes in at number nine for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, has played very well in front of a defense that is very American Hockey League-ish. Tuka Rask at number eight uh, is uh, is kind of an aging goaltender now. It's kind of funny to hear an aging goaltender because I still remember Tuka Rask being drafted by the Toronto Maple Leafs and then then giving up prospect Tuka Rask to the Boston Bruins to some guy named Andrew Raycroft in which is one of the best trades in Toronto Maple Leafs history. You know, you, you tend to bring that up from time to time, I notice. I do. <laughs> at number seven, the defending Vesna Trophy candidate and winner... Pekka Rene, who will not win it ever again, especially after what he did in Game 7 against the Winnipeg Jets in the Western Conference semifinals. Marc-Andre Fleury has had an awesome bounce back from a career in Pittsburgh where he was the backup the last number of years. He's played very well in Vegas. He comes in at number 6. I don't know if he can do it again, Mike. I, I'm not saying that he's... I think it would be very difficult. Like I'm, I'm with you on this one, and I like him that, too. To duplicate that yeah. would be tough. Jonathan Quick at number five, which makes a lot of sense. This is a very good goaltender. Health has been an issue with Jonathan Quick as well. The Kings are looking pretty decent this year. They've stocked up on some free agents. They've made some trades. I wonder if the Kings make that jump into top three in the Pacific. Jonathan Quick will have everything to do with it. At number four is Connor Hallerbuck. A lot of people will sit there and say, well, he's had one good season. Let's not forget, this guy has 200 NHL games under his belt. Last year was his breakout season and damn was it a good breakout season he is now the all-time leader in a single season for american goalies in wins in the history of the game that's how good he's been at number three here's my first problem with the list because i could juggle some of these before but here's my first problem andre vashilevsky at number three i i think that's uh that almost seems like one of those picks that they make because it's the sexy one, it's the, it's the current one, it's the one that, you know, a, a really small sample size. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not putting him ahead of Alibach. And he is playing behind a steel curtain type defense, maybe the best defense in the NHL. For sure it is going to be this year with some of the new, uh, new pickups the uh, Lightning have made. If the Lightning don't win the Atlantic Division, there should be an investigation, Look, and Andre Vasilevsky will not have to be great for them to win. If 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 Halibut plays for Tampa Bay, does Tampa Bay get by Washington? Yes, I think they. I, I, that's yeah, that's. I think they do. That's the test to me. And I'll also say, speaking of Washington, Braden Holtby, Stanley Cup champion, Braden Holtby. There's going to be some that sit there and argue: Is he number one? In my opinion, I think he is. Fantasy wise, though, and a lot of people will be picking this. Sergey Vrabovsky of the uh, of the Columbus Blue Jackets. A lot of shutouts. He'll play seventy games. He'll get in a really good goals against. He has the sexy numbers to put him at number one. The surprising goaltender that's not on this list is maybe the world's greatest goaltender when he's healthy, and we're talking about Carey Price. Can he have a bounce-back season, a healthy bounce-back season with the Canadians? I think he can, but what he's playing in front of is is borderline terrible. Uh, I think Montreal in, is a lottery pick, to tell you the honest truth. In French, the word is mailed. Yeah, that, that yeah. is exactly it. <laughs> yeah. Russell's been talking to you, too, oh, before yeah. the show. So that's the only surprise I have there. I think like maybe Carey Price would be a little more respected considering he's Canada's best goaltender. And if there was an Olympic Games yesterday, he would have been part of it. But there's starting to be that argument that Brayden Holtby might be the guy that is pushing Carey Price. And you know what? If I'm sitting there in a Canadian net and I have Carey Price, Brayden Holtby, one and two on my team, I think we're looking pretty good as far as uh, capturing another gold medal. That's another story for another time. That's your top ten on NHL.com. Goaltenders. And uh, maybe uh, maybe tomorrow we'll break down some of their top 50s because there's a lot of top 50 lists coming up of players altogether. Best top 50 players goalies, forwards, defensemen, everything.